to Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Suhi Azman. We bring you companies in the news today and we bring in a very familiar face. Essentially, it's DG. Closed about 1.78% uh, lower to 5 ringgit 53. Uh, the funny thing about DG is uh, today is the announcement of the Edges Billion Ringgit Club and they won a couple of awards. Most profitable company under big cat companies. Highest ROE with three years. I mean, but this is very par course for DG. I mean, we're both DG users, aren't we, yes. Suhi? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm a very loyal five-year DG user, have to disclose that with you. But anyway, um, I think aside from BRC, right, I think DG also announced the third quarterly earnings, right? Yes, yes. Actually, that's the big news going up today that basically they announced their latest earnings, 18.5% drop in net profit. Uh, according to the company, it was a mix of people still being GST shy and aggressive promotions by com their competitors that brought down the number. And herein lies the rub. DG has been very, very steady in growing its segment. But if you're looking at people who go corporate, that tends to be Maxis. Yeah, it tends to be the Maxis or Cellcom basically. And I think DG uh, wanted to move into that space. And, and, and because of that, you know, they wanted, I think corporate, they make a, a better margin compared to the retail market. I it's suppose. also bulk. You know, mm. and it's like, it's also a little bit of bulk. So, and, and the thing is, because they're better known for their prepaid segment, of course, to acknowledge they have grown quite a bit, uh, that's where the competition comes in and that's where they start to feel the bite. You mobile, yes, all of that eats into them. You know, especially since it's like highly competitive. I mean, all the MVN, MVNOs, for instance, you know, um, are also really, really uh, going all out in terms of admi uh, uh, advertising and promotion for that. And, and I think they've also been eating the market share of DG as well. Yeah, so, I mean, the numbers are understandable uh, considering the tough things. Now it's about whether they're growing under CEO Alban Murthy. We, we met him actually earlier at the BRC. You know, he does acknowledge it's tough. Uh, but they're going to try and grow their customer base a little bit more. MIDF actually has a note on them. They keep them as the top pick for the, what is it, for their mobile segment because they want to add this new thing called voice over LTE. Volte. And they, yeah, so Volte if you want Volte. to be, if you want to be snappy like Sohi <laughs> about that. So yeah, they do think that the company has a buy recommendation with target price of 704. I think reading all the signs on the wall, it's going to be very tough for the mobile guys. But, you know, Telenor is the backing of DG. I think they, it, it's going to be quite... I think it'll hold out. Yeah, but at the same time, you, know, you have to understand that the Edge uh, research also has previously picked this stock as uh, the, the stock pick because I think one of them, they said that it has a very stable cash flow and also a defensive and with higher than average market yield for investors with lower risk appetite. Yeah, so just to bring away everything, the latest third quarter earnings for DG.com Bahad came out today. 18.5% drop in net profit. The, basically, people were scared of GST. You had very intense competition. Uh, MIDF is very, very confident on them. They have a buy. But my question is, I think both our questions is, where are you going to grow kind of going forward? But moving on to sort of like companies that are stable, we are looking at Insider Asia stock of the day, ES Ceramics Tech, up about 2.52% to 81.5 cent. It's been climbing about 52% since uh, August, but Insider Asia seems to think there's more room. I mean, I think there's certainly more room for growth, basically. I mean, if you look at the company, for instance, it specializes in ceramic dipping formers used for molding for glove makers and, and balloons. And I think the Insider Asia says that the rubber glove industry is going to be through major expansion success for the next five years. We've seen top glove, had the leg for instance, you know, wanted to increase the capacity. Yeah, so top glove, I suppose you're riding the coattails of the glove guys and the glove guys have been having great numbers simply because the US dollar is in their favour and uh, I suppose this is the time to make hay while the sun shines, they say. So it's definitely top glove adding a capacity, annual capacity totaling 7.8 billion gloves. Can you even imagine what 7.8 billion gloves looks like? I don't know, it's, it's going to be, you know, if you have the earth, you know, it will be like maybe... Maybe enough years. to cover it, right? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. you know, over the next two years, uh, Hata Lega, they want to add another annual capacity of 28.4 billion gloves. That will probably be enough to cover the earth. Kosan is 22 billion. Supermax is 10.8 billion. So, in that vein, ES Ceramic, who does those hand things hand that you things, see dipping yes. into things, is is going to benefit. I mean, they are riding the growth of this, uh, the momentum of this uh, uh, hand, uh, hand uh, rubber glove, for instance. And if you look at the ES, I mean, it was first picked up by the H uh, Momentum stocks on March, thir March 3rd, early this year. And since then, the company has surged 54.7% to 41 cents yesterday. This can be attributed to record earnings, which jumped more than twofold from 2.6 million ringgit to 5.6 million ringgit. So interestingly, right, the company has 
risen itself from the flames from uh, losses that they saw in 2011. As you can see, the numbers are actually pretty decent. You know, they were actually due to one-off changes, so not actually fundamentally in the change of the company. But they did see like between 2012 and 2015, revenue grew something from like 19.9 .9 million to 25. You know, net earnings also followed that kind of path. Of course, you know, it, it's, uh, they've also like sturdy free annual cash flow. So it follows the trend of what Insider Asia likes, a lot of very solid cash flow. I know, I mean, how do you feel about the stroke? I mean, I think the stock has a lot of potential, basically. And it's actually quite cheap. I mean, below one ringgit, I think investors would, you know, wanted to take a look at these stocks again. And, you know, and, and the PE is also quite attractive as well. 15.1 times, um, uh, very attractive in a compared to listed companies, which is ranging from 16 to 40.4 times. Okay, so just to wrap it up, Insider Asia stock of the day today is ES Ceramics. They think it will ride the coattails of the top glove guys. Well, not top gloves, sorry. Uh, basically, the, <laughs> the glove guys gloves. in general, top glove of which is top dog, where basically you're going to see a huge expansion and all of them uh, benefit from the US dollar and of course the company itself has bounced back from bad numbers in 2011 to show very consistent growth and that's all we actually have for Market Matters today I'm Nadia Hassan this is Suhi Azman if you actually want more on the stories we talked about you go over to theedgemarkets.com and of course you can pick up a physical copy of the paper thanks a lot for that drive home safe good night <laughs>